In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use the liquify Photoshop action and what we're going to be doing is using this photo and running the action to create this look here. So from this to this with just uh, one step really. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've got my photo here. So a few things you need to check off before we run the action just to make sure it all runs smoothly. Just go to the image menu, go to mode, make sure you're in RGB color mode and 8 bits of channel is selected. Uh, secondly, make sure your layer is set as the background, so it should look like this in the layer panel. If it doesn't, if you open up your photo and it's called something else, you will need to set it as a background. So to do that, uh, go to layer, new background from layer, and it will set as a background. Uh, next, in your layer panel, just the top right hand corner here, select that little icon, go to panel options. Make sure down the bottom here that add copy to copy layers and groups is selected. And lastly, just make sure that you're working with a, a good size photo. So here I've got 1600 by 2500 at 300 dpi. Alright, uh, so next what we need to do, we need to create a layer called brush. It needs to be all lowercase, so just make sure of that. And with the brush layer selected, uh, we want to grab a colour, any colour. Hit B on the keyboard to get your brush out. And we want to start brushing over the photo uh, where we want to apply the effect and another thing to remember when you're brushing is that wherever we brush is the uh, parts of the photo that are going to be in in focus everywhere else is going to be blurred it's going to have that um, sense of uh, depth of field to it I'll demonstrate this after the action's finished uh, so it's a bit more clear but for the moment I'm just going to brush over um, the parts that I want to um, generate these liquid effect from. So keep in mind that where you cut, where your brush is going to sample those colours. So like this jacket here, I want to get that yellow. So some yellow parts, this green, um, down through here, get his jeans, get his shoe. Yeah. All right, so that'll do. So, uh, so what I'm going to show you is that wherever we haven't brushed is going to be blurred. So his feet are going to be blurred, his hands are going to be blurred. Um, so let's go ahead and now load our action. So if we go to the window menu, uh, select actions. Oops, the actions panel will pop up here, and I've already got it loaded here. So uh, if you just go to the top right hand corner icon here and select load actions just go to the liquify the ATN file and it pops up here and that's all ready to go so that's all you need to do to get um, all the effects generated so we just click play in this action the action runs for about two between two and three minutes so let me just click play and I'll fast forward the video Alright, so the action is finished and you can see now it has generated all our parts and you can see the blurring of the photo which I'll uh, talk a bit, a bit more about now. So let's minimise the uh, actions panel, go into the layer panel here and to quickly clean up, uh, minimise all these folders, just with the liquify folder selected, on a PC, hold down control alt and click on this arrow, it's command option on a Mac, click that and it collapses all the folders so we have a much neater workspace now. Alright, so I'm just going to turn off the liquify folder so you can see that wherever we brushed remains in focus, everything else is out of focus. Now the layer that's given it the blur is this one here called depth blur. So you can turn that one on and off if you don't want it. Uh, if you want to um, say his, his uh, hand here, if I want that to be in focus, I can select the layer mask, grab a black brush and I can just brush that in. Or his hand here, I can Get that in focus and uh, white. If I brush white, I can bring that blur back in. All right. So with that done, that's now. Uh, now, what you, one thing you will notice that when the action's finished is that uh, it's when you're trying to move these parts around inside the parts folder, it's actually quite slow because these um, these layer styles are pretty intense on Photoshop. So what I like to do as soon as the action's finished go inside the parts folder and just with any one of these parts layers selected, the ones in green,
just hover over the FX um, sign, right click and go hide all effects. And what that does, it, it does that, hides all effects. So when you move these parts around, it's, it's much faster. So what I like to do is firstly, um, move all the parts around, play around with the colors, and when I'm finished, I can turn those effects back on. Okay, so let's just now go into the top folder adjustments, talk about what's in here quickly. So I've kept our brush layer hanging around, so if you want to run this action again, just drag this to the top, delete these layers, and you're ready to go. Now one thing to remember about this action is that every time you run this action, you're going to get a different result. The parts are always going to look different. So even if you use the same brushed area, um, you're going to get a different result every time. So keep that in mind. All right, so I'll just undo that, bring that back in here. Uh, darken edges, just adds a little bit of a vignette around um, the design, so you can turn that one on and off if you don't want it. Color tone, uh, just by default applied just a simple grade to the photo, you can see that there. Uh, if you don't want it, turn it off. You can also double click on here and go inside the color channels and uh, mess around with that. So overall saturation, uh, by default, I've increased the saturation to plus 35. You can increase that more uh, or less. Okay, and contrast, this layer below, by default, I've added just a little bit of contrast. You can click on the word opacity at the top here. Uh, click, and if you hold down and drag to left and right, you can, you can play around with the opacity of that. Alright, so by default, it's set to around 20%. So that's the adjustments folder. So let's now go inside the liquify folder and talk about all the ways we can sort of customize this. So as I mentioned earlier, we have our parts folder. This has all the you know, all the parts in it. So if you go inside, all the layers in green are layers that we can move around uh, just like this. So you can select one. Let's just go down and reposition some of them. So number one here, we can move that around. Number two. Now one thing to remember, if you, you don't have to use all these parts, so if number two is not really doing much or you don't really like the, the form of it, you can switch it off. Okay, number three, oh, move that one, four, this side. So you notice some are blurred, others in focus, that's just to help with that um, depth of field look. Okay, so you get the point, so you can keep going down the line, you can mess around the position of all those. And you also notice that above every one of these green layers, the parts, you can actually color each individual part. So for P1 here, um, if I just double click on this layer above, I can increase the saturation. I can also use this handle here to recolor those parts. So you can see uh, around his head here, you can see those colors changing. And what you can also do, if you select this one here, colorize, just like that, um, crank the saturation up, and then you can color it a single color and use this uh, handle here to yeah recolor it. So you can actually go down the line and color each individual element if you wanted to. All right, so I'll just turn that off. Now this one above, uh, parts overall color. By default, this is turned off. So if you turn that one on, uh, double click on it again. You can use this saturation slider, but you can also drag this one around to randomize the color of all the parts. So it's a good way of previewing some, some color combinations. Uh, okay, so keep that one in mind. Now, if I just go into the, uh, back up to the top here, uh, at the very top we have this one that's turned off by default called foreground blurred parts. I've left this one off by default, um, so I'll just turn this one on. Wait for it to. Oh, there it is. Not sure what happened there, but uh, so you can see that this is the parts that sort of appear, you know, right up at the camera. They're always going to be blurred. Always going to be bigger. So just by default, it's turned off. So just remember to flick that one on. And what you can also do with each one of these parts layers, you'll notice that there's a layer mask next to it. So if you grab a black brush, I can then. Uh, brush into this layer to hide areas that I don't want. So I've got this this blurry part over his face. Don't want that. I'll get rid of it. And I'll just reposition it. You can also, you know, rotate all these parts 
um, scale them. Okay, and if you want to create sort of um, some different looks to these parts, just like just focus on um, where you brush. So I can like thin this area out here. You know, you can really create some abstract forms that way. All right, uh, this layer below waves. Uh, just by default, it doesn't really do anything. Now, if I uh, select this mask and let's just go Control I to invert it, you'll see that it's applied this wavy effect over all the areas that we brushed. Now, what I like to do is personally have control over where I um, brush that on, so I don't want it to distort his face. So, yeah, by default, it's black. So you can grab a white brush. Then I can just brush over areas that I want to appear more distorted, like his legs here, his arm, his chest, maybe around the top of his head, maybe not his ears. So it just um, helps with the overall effect, pretty much. Now, this uh, folder here called Focused Area, if I turn this folder off, you'll notice that, um, yeah, well, all the areas that were in focus have sort of uh, disappeared. Now, what I like to do with this one, if Let's just turn this ways one off for the moment. So this focus area, you can see um, what that's doing. So it's quite an important folder. But if you turn it off, you actually get a sense of where some of these parts, these liquid parts overlap your photo. So what I like to do is um, just yeah, flick that one on and off and you can see where they overlap. And using this mask, if I grab a black brush, um, I can actually brush into that layer and reveal some of those overlapping parts see what's happening here, like over his arms. So it can create much more of a organic look. Uh, like that. So going inside this folder, we just have two layers. We have one called sharpening, which just adds a little bit of sharpening to your photo, to the area that's in focus. And this layer below is, yeah, the main uh, layer that has, um, the photo that's in fo part of the photo that's in focus. All right, so that's those two. We'll flick ways back on. Oh, one thing you might want to do. Um, yeah, you'll notice that with if you brush uh, the waves element on, it's actually going to overwrite those overlapping areas. So you can see that there. So just keep that in mind as well. So we'll turn waves off for this. And so that's pretty much uh, all there is to it. Uh, it's important that you know. When the action's finished, that you um, you know right-click on this FX symbol and hide all the effects, so it's a much faster when you're moving parts around. It's much faster, and you know you might not want to have that um, glossy, gooey look. You might want to keep it like this type of look. Um, but what I'm going to do now, like since I've finished, I'm going to right-click on the FX symbol and I'm going to show all effects and what it's going to do. It's now going to turn on all the layer styles uh, for those effects, so they're all ready to go. And if you say there's a particular sort of blob that you don't want the effects applied to, what I like to do uh, is if I go to Auto Select, I can click parts of this photo. I'll just hide the darkened edges layer. So this white part here, I might remove the effects from that. So if I just click on that, it quickly selects. Um, the parts, so that's part five. So what I can do is twirl open this and just tick the effects off. Just give it a sec and the effects are gone. So you don't actually have to apply the effects to all these. You can be selective on which ones you uh, apply them to. Okay, that's it. So I hope you have fun uh, using it and if you've got any questions, just send me over an email and I'll get in touch.